Welcome to Anecdotes for Success with Matt and Paul. Storytelling is an art form, emphasizing the value and learning that is created through personal experience. Our purpose is to share these stories and experiences with the listener. Everyone has a powerful testimony. Let's use them to level up to our best life with truth, meaning, trade-offs, and perspective. Big shout out to Isaac Mather for the new podcast intro. You can check Isaac's music out on all socials or directly at IsaacMatherMusic.com. So what Matt what Matt and I do now is he's not here today, but if I have someone Zoom with the class, I put it on the podcast as a 0.5 episode. Oh wow, I love that. Yeah, so Genius now you idea. better you better level up. Let's do it. Where where are you zooming in from today? I'll show you. I'm calling from Tucson, Arizona. Nice. Oh, I told him I didn't know where you'd be. I thought you were in the States somewhere, but I didn't know where for sure. Yeah, my uh, my girlfriend's studying nursing at the U of A. So it's like a 15-month program. She just started like a few months ago. So I plan to spend like maybe four or five months in Arizona over the next year. Sweet. Like back and forth. Yeah. Well, this is my afternoon class. What's going on, going on afternoon class? <laughs> this is Raj Mahini. You're on a big screen, too. I just have you on the computer. They, so cool. I, I gave them a little info about you. Start off, do you have like 30 minutes? Yeah, I got more than that. I got a lot of okay. time. Okay, perfect. So they, okay. they ask a lot of questions. I gave them a little download of your business and what you do. Start off okay. from college, how you were the the kid that wanted to go to college to play tennis, the little skinny kid, right? For sure, for sure. So I went to college for tennis. I'm not going to lie. When I was um, like 12 to 15, I really wanted to play professional tennis. But then I just lost too much. You know, reality hit me. I was like, okay, this is not happening. What's the next best thing I could do? Play college tennis. So then I begged my parents to send me to a tennis academy. I'd go to like summer camps for like two weeks in the U.S. I'm Indian from Hong Kong, and I would love it there. I would, it, was just, it was just a bunch of kids playing tennis, hanging out, it would feel like home. So I'd be like, can I go to boarding school? Can I go? And then finally at 16, they sent me. Went two years in uh, Ojai, California. It's called Wild Tennis Academy. Then I got recruited to play college tennis. In that time, playing college tennis, I started and failed four businesses. And then in my senior year, I was like um, getting these job interviews and stuff, and I realized, listen, I don't want to go down this path. Let me, you know, try another business. So then I went in to coaching uh, my last semester, started working with people for free. And then by the time I graduated, I was making enough money to just cover my expenses and then just went all in. This was I graduated two years ago. What your so your dad was a traditional business person and still is, right? Yes. Yes. Sir. What did he, what did he think about all this? So the way I approach the conversation is I know that my parents are like very traditional, strict Indian parents. So it's like they would need like proof. I can't just go to them with an idea expecting them to be bought in. So I didn't really tell anyone for a while. And then I waited for them to like really come to me and be like, yo, how's the work visa going? Like um, which job are you going to take? How are the interviews going and everything? Like what's your plan? And I was like, all right, give me like two weeks and I'll tell you everything. So then in that two weeks, I decided to get another free client. I already had like three free clients and a paid client at that time. Got another free client, showed my like total progress I've made, showed how I delivered my service, showed the client results, showed everything, showed that my goals made a whole presentation. And they were like pretty shocked. And then I remember at the end of the con uh, the presentation, I was like, yeah, I want to do this for a year. And if in a year I'm not at this monetary goal or whatever and cannot fully sustain myself, then I'll go back and I'll do a sales job. And then they were a little stunned for a bit when they had that conversation because it came out of a complete surprise. And I remember my dad was like, this is very good, but, you know, we need to think about it. And my mom was like, no, this is actually very great. You know, this this looks awesome. But, yeah, we need some time to process it. So then they spoke to my only other relative in the U.S. or my only relative in the U.S., my uncle. And they talked to him about it. And then like three, four days later, they come back and they're like, you know what? We thought we talked about it. And we think it's a good idea. Go for it. You know, you're so young. You can try it out. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But at least you get that experience. So I was blessed. 
that they were on board. I wasn't a hundred percent sure that they would be, but I knew that if I presented them it in a very clear way, that that would be my best shot at getting them on board. And the rest is history, right? Yes, sir. His his has it been going better or worse than you thought? I'm kind of setting you up with some of these questions. Yeah, yeah, no, honestly. I'll be honest, it's gone worse than I thought, but it's also because like, I always had really high expectations. Like I wanted to make, I'll just give you an example of what this means, right? Because so within a year in business, I wanted to make 10K a month. And then I hit that after a year and a half in business. So it's like slightly, you could say I hit that goal late, but I was still happy with it. Like I was like, okay, you know, set big goals. And if I fall short, at least I've made good progress. That makes sense. So it's going worse because you set such huge goals. Yes, you could say that for sure. Awesome. I now I remember a lot from our podcast a while back. When yeah, you, we did too, huh? Yeah, yeah. When, when yeah. well, a third a third one soon. When when you yes, uh, were in college, you originally weren't into lifting and bodybuilding, right? You were scrawny, or is that the right word? Um. Yeah, I definitely was. I would say that I started lifting and like when I was 16 for part of the reason just to like put on some muscle because I felt really skinny and then part of the reason to like help with my tennis game. But then I I would say I only made good progress like my my junior year of college probably. What'd your coach think of that? So my senior year of college, my coach didn't like it. He was like, oh, you got too big. Like you're just training your show muscles. And I was like, bro, you haven't even seen me play. And then after two weeks of playing, he was like, actually, no, my bad. You're right. You're actually playing good. Um, so, yeah, tennis players, they don't really, like, lift weights too much. So some of my coaches thought it was great. Some thought it was unnecessary. So tell us about your – tell us how you get clients, sir. I'm just opening it up. Tell sure. – because what, what I told the class uh, is you basically can travel where you want to go. Yeah. But you have to work and you have to have clients. Yeah, Describe how that works. Of course. So it's like sometimes people see maybe my lifestyle. And they think it's just like a vacation, lifelong. But no, it's like every day there is work. I'm blessed where it's like I can choose how much work I want to do. So I can control which times people can book calls with me. I can um, one day I can dedicate it to one thing. Another day I can dedicate it to another thing. So I have control of my schedule. But I would say on average – let's say seven hours of work a day on weekdays and then maybe like four to five hours of work on weekends. And what I do is I help entrepreneurs with their sleep, building muscle, losing fat, habits, productivity, all that stuff. And I've been doing it for like two and a half years right now. Right now I have 29 clients and I get my clients through multiple ways. The main way is Twitter. So I just post a ton of content on Twitter every single day. Uh, and then people just reach out to me there. Um, I also get a couple of clients through email marketing and I also get a couple of clients through referrals. I'll say 90% of my clients just comes from Twitter started out just, you know, committed to post creating content every single day, worked with people for free, got those free clients results. One of my, uh, one of the three free clients I worked with became my first paid client, constantly tried to improve my service, improve the content, improved like every little thing that you could like to make the business more efficient, to make it more predictable. And then over time, if you stay consistent, you'll see progress. And then obviously, it's a, you get help from other people. Like I've hired several coaches, several mentors myself, who are all several steps ahead of me, and they have helped me. And yeah, it's, uh, it's going pretty well. My next big goal is to open up a gym. Plan to do this in the next nine to 12 months. I already have one investor, and it's probably going to be in Dubai. No way. So you don't have to be there. Like when you open it up, you can still so, be nomadic or are you going to base yourself out of there? Of course. So the thing is that I will be semi based out of there. So I'll be based out of there for at least like four months in a row the, when it's first starting and then moving forward, maybe like three, four months a year. That's cool. So it'll be your home base. You'll get your footprint there. Members yeah. will see you, et cetera, et cetera. That's awesome. I mean, I've known you since the beginning of your journey. So the, yeah, the way, the way you're growing, it's it's just incredible. Uh, do you have a favorite time of day you like to put in your work or does it depend? Like w morning, afternoon, evening? Yeah. 
Yeah. Or mm. does it depend on the client or, or. So, it, so I'll, I'll, I can walk you through how I go about my day to day. So I don't oh, like can, do can I interrupt much. quick? Can I, inter- yeah, oh, well, of course, of course. not Ken, I am interrupting. So you'll see them writing a lot. They have these blue booklets we give them out. And every okay. time they meet somebody in public or on Zoom, they put their name, their contact, what they like, their information. They're creating like this database of, of people. So you never know when awesome. one of them might reach out to you. So if you see them writing, they're not like drawing cartoon characters. <laughs> yeah. All good. All good. Um, so, yeah. So my day to day, I feel like there's a lot of little things that go in the business, but there's like a few priorities, right? So priority number one is checking in with my clients, making sure they're getting results. So what that looks like is first I check in on the program, which is like a, it's like a software that I pay a hundred dollars a month to, and they let me like use their whatever platform to deliver for my clients. So I build them programs on their nutrition, all that stuff. So I check in, I, I check in with, if they did their workouts, if they got stronger, if they have any questions, if they have any comments, check in that. Then I go and I check in the Telegram, which is where they communicate probably longer messages, right? And then some of these will be voice messages. Sometimes I'll do like a video message check-in. So that maybe takes like an hour to two a day. And that's usually how I start my days. Then I'll probably just like like take a mini break. It's not really a break. I'll just go on Twitter, reply to comments, just like scroll for like 10 minutes, comment on a few of my friends, chill, maybe have a coffee or whatever. Then I will usually create some sort of content, either it will usually just be on Instagram, some Twitter, long form, YouTube, whatever, record some videos, so all that. Then I'll go back in and check in with my clients and I'll write some sort of long form post, usually like an email uh, post for my community, something like that. And then I will, you know, check in with my team if they need anything and then whatever's on the to-do list, I'll do that. So most days look usually like pretty similar, right? Obviously, like today's cool, I, I get to do this. It's, I usually don't do stuff like this. It's fun. It doesn't really feel like work at all. Yeah, so some days I'll have little things that are different, but most days look pretty identical. It's just focusing on the clients, putting out some content, checking in with leads, checking in with the team, and making sure everything is all good. And obviously, like I have a, I'll say average of three to four client calls a day, and then maybe like one sales call a day. That's awesome. Uh, How long do you keep a client for, or does that depend? It de- does depend for sure. And I feel like um, this is something I've improved a lot in. Like maybe my first year in business, I'll just keep a client for three months. And once they've achieved their initial goal, not really know how to extend the client's lifetime value. But now I, I definitely have found ways to keep them on for six to uh, six months to a year. One, by making sleep a key focus of our approach, not just training and nutrition. Um, number two, also trying to help in any way I can. So for example, if they have a social media related business, I'll try to help there. If like I have a client who who's like in college, 21, and he has some struggles with like relationships or whatever. So we'll talk about that. So just seeing like where else I can help besides just what they expected and then always setting new goals. So once they've achieved their first goal, okay, where do you want to go from there? Sometimes they're really just happy, you know, losing 20 pounds and they don't want to, you know, do any more. That's all good. You know, you help them get there. You have to be fine with that. Right. But uh, definitely there are ways to extend clients, like how long they stay with you. And that's definitely been a main focus over the last say year. So I'd say to answer your question, went on a bit of a tangent there, I would say six to nine months average. Awesome. Do you find certain clients, do you have to meet through Zoom more or can they just get a text or a phone 100%. call? 100 percent. So definitely I have a couple of clients who are like super communicative where it's like every, they have to update me on every little thing. And it is what it is. That's just how they are. And it's cool. I feel like it balances out. If every client was like that or if it was, like, annoying, then I would be like, yo, like, take it easy, like, chill. I would let them know. But most of the times, it's just, like, one or two clients need a little more attention. Then one or two clients are less communicative, but then everyone else has, like, a happy medium. So I've had no real issues with that. You can't expect every client, once you have 29, 30 clients, to be a piece of cake, walk in the park. So that's part of the, the business especially when it is a service-based business. But uh, yeah, usually it's uh, the first month working with me, there's weekly calls. And then the second and third month, it's usually like two calls a month. And then it usually comes down to one call every month, just because we have 24 uh, seven access to me via telegram, voice message, video messages, and all that stuff. And once they get the fundamentals down, there's not too much more to focus on. It's more about just like staying consistent and making like small adjustments. But when the, the first month, that's when they're making like massive lifestyle changes. That's when they need the most accountability, 
That's when they need the most help, structure, guidance, motivation, all that stuff. So let's say if I sign like six clients in a month, eight clients in a month, that month's going to be uh, more work than usual. But if I sign two clients in a month, it's going to be less work just because those, those new clients take up the most time because you have to do the onboarding and you have to make sure that they're seeing progress and make sure they're clear with everything. Last question, I promise, before I let no them out. Uh, so the trade-off for all the freedom you technically can experience, you have to keep pretty disciplined with a lot of your own habits. Yes, but I Is think there... it makes it easy for me specifically, right? Because let's say you live this um, semi-nomadic lifestyle, because I wouldn't say I'm a full nomad. Like I travel with like a suitcase. Um, so semi-nomadic lifestyle, if you have an online business and live this lifestyle, it can be hard to like stay on track with your own health, your own sleep, your own habits. Um, but because that is literally my business, like I coach people on how to do that. I always feel this strong sense that I have to do this or else I'm just going to be a hypocrite. And people can tell, like I'm recording videos all the time. If I look like out of shape or bloated or like, like I've been drinking every day for three months and not gone in the gym, no one's going to take me seriously. So I have to stay in at least decent shape and decent habits or I'll feel like a hypocrite. So it's easy for me, but for other business owners, it definitely is a challenge. And it's something I see a lot where they prioritize their um, their business. And then once they achieve some sort of, you know, leverage, capital, freedom, whatever, then they, you know, celebrate with whatever, drinking, going out, doing this, but then they never prioritize their health. But the ones that, the entrepreneurs that I've seen who have a solid foundation of health, whether they've just been in it, played sports, athlete, prior, whatever, they tend to see the most success in the long term. Like they tend to scale and tend to see success in the game for not just a couple of years, but five, 10, 20 years, because they, during periods of high stress, they're already pretty solid in their health. So let's say you have a high stress period, you're doing a launch. Two weeks, you can't get any sleep, right? You're really stressed out. If for the months prior, your sleep was locked in, you weren't stressed, you're doing all this stuff. If you take two weeks off and two weeks kind of like, slacking off whatever it's okay but if the few months before you were already pretty like not making your health a priority and then you have two weeks high stress where you're all these bad habits creep up you're going to be in a very tough spot so it can be hard to come back from but um yeah i would say for me it's not too hard but it can definitely be a challenge for some i have to admit based on your twitter posts i've had some good meal ideas because you're always Let's posting go. i love your protein based pictures Thank you. I mean, every meal is protein based, right? I don't think there's been, I mean, maybe there was like one time I posted like some chips with guacamole and like a glass of red wine saying not every meal has to be protein based. But I think that's besides, besides that, everything else is like egg, steak, salmon, shrimp, chicken. Stop. I'm getting hungry. Yeah, uh, my bad. My bad. Questions. We got one in the back. Go ahead, sir. Um, what do type it. do you offer? It's like your clients. Could you hear that? Okay. I could not hear that okay. What type of training do you offer? Like, For sure. What? So, yeah, I, I get. I think I get the question. So most of my clients, they are in their 30s, 40s, or they're doing pretty well financially, and uh, they're confused with their health in the sense that they've tried to lose weight or get in shape before, but because when they Google stuff, there's all this contradictory information, they don't really know. So they try these different extreme diets, but then can't stick to it. So my approach is based on sustainability and long term. So I'll figure out where they're at, like what are their favorite foods, how much, you know, what are their habits like, how much time do they have, and I'll design a program based on that. Usually what this looks like is starting off with two full body workouts a week, 30 minutes each workout, full body, I think that's best because um, you get maximum frequency, it's good for recovery, and when you train just one muscle group per workout, what happens is you get that muscle group gets fried and you're by the end of it, you're not fully like engaged. You're just dead. Right. But if you do full body, you only have two 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 to three sets per muscle group. So you're like really in it. So I find that that my clients respond well to that. Um, so we start off with two full bodies. So let's say Tuesday, Friday, full body workout, whatever equipment they have, either home or gym, they fill it on a form. And I design a program based on that. Right. With the rest times, all of that laid out. Then. If their goal is fat loss, I'll add some sort of cardio, whether it'll be like 5,000 steps a day, hikes on the weekend, sports on the weekend, 20 minute walk a day. I'll find something that they can do because some people can do more, some people can do less. And if you ask someone who's like, can do very little to do a lot, he's going to get overwhelmed, discouraged and do nothing. So it's a key skill to be able to meet someone where they're at and then just ask them to do a little bit more. 
So that's basically my approach in terms of training. Um, in terms of exercise selection, I base it on what they have available and what's what do I think is the most like safe exercise. So I can just give you a few exercises I usually program my clients if you want. For back, I usually do chest supported rows because you're like your spine's very in a safe position. It's, it's dope exercise. Um, for chest, I usually do like either push ups or incline dumbbell bench. For legs, either do like split squats, uh, leg press, uh, leg extensions, hamstring curls. And then uh, for shoulders, lateral raises, overhead press. It just depends on what they have, right? But I usually just pick one muscle group. I mean, one exercise per muscle group. And then whichever, if it, feel, if it feels uncomfortable, if they give me feedback like, ah, I don't really get it, then I'll swap it out or we'll take a deeper dive in their form. So I have my clients in the first week record a uh, videos of their own form. They send it back and then I can give them feedback just to make sure they get the form down early. So... They avoid, you know, what happens is if you don't focus on form early, you could be doing these minor things, but not know that they're, you know, bad. So then when you increase the weight over time and get really strong with these minor, you know, whatever flaws in your form, you might, that's when injuries happen. So that's another thing we do. Cause if you get injured, you know, you can't really work out for a couple of months, you get demotivated and the client's unhappy. So that's the, that's the last thing I want to, I want from my clients. Thank you. What else we got? What did you uh, major and minor in in, uh, in college? Tell yeah, good know. question, bro. So I'm, I'm, I I'm uh, I went to a liberal arts college. I didn't really know what that meant, to be honest, um, at the time. And uh, I went first year, undecided major. So I just tried a bunch of classes, painting, drawing, whatever. Um, didn't really know what I wanted to do. So I was like, okay, <clears throat> I'll just major in business. So I majored in business. And then... My dad, like junior year, was like, yo, what are you minoring in? I was like, I'm not minoring in anything. He's, and then he freaked out. He's like, you got to minor in something? I was like, okay, what should I minor in? He was like, economics. And I was like, okay, fine. So I minored in econ and majored in business. But I didn't really, like, I barely passed econ, to be honest. What what was the business you tried and failed? Do you mind sharing that? Yeah, yeah of course. If there was a ton. There was a ton. So... I can walk you through the the two before I found my successful business coaching, right? So the the second last one was when I got and I when I accidentally accepted an unpaid internship during the summer of COVID. So I already had two paid internships before, so I assumed this would be a paid internship. So then when I got the the internship, and I was like, "Yo, how much does it pay?" By the way, they're like, "Oh, it's unpaid." And I was like, "I felt bad, so I just accepted it." And then I googled how to make money online, right? And then I did some Googling for a day and I found this thing by, I don't know if some of you guys know him, his name is Jason Capital. And it's a course, it's like a couple of thousand dollars. I had to like, that was all I had at the time. So I was really hoping this would work. Um, and essentially the premise of the course was you post content on social media, right? That conveys you as a business expert, which is just stupid. Because at this point, the people getting the course, me didn't know anything. And what you do is you post content about, let's say, email marketing or SEO, search engine optimization. And you find people who need that service. So let's say you find a personal brand who needs email marketing done. And then you find a, someone who does email marketing. And then you connect them together and then you take 10%. So that was a very dumb business model looking back because you don't really, you're just a middleman. You don't have any like skills and it's just, it's just silly. You don't know anything. So that didn't work. But luckily, I got a refund after sending a ton of emails because, trust me, I really needed that, that money back. Um, and then when, with that course, I met a guy who was like, yo, come to Twitter, come to this place called Money Twitter. And then I did affiliate marketing. So affiliate marketing, how it works is you basically sell someone else's product and using a spe special code and then you get whatever, 5%, 10%. So I did that for three months and made 20 bucks. And I was like, this sucks. So then I quit. Stopped for three, four months, and then went back to Twitter and just rebranded as a fitness account. But you technically learn from each failure. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Awesome. Next and question. Thanks for a cool story on podcasts, right? If I yeah. just had it like easy at like 17 and no struggles, and it wouldn't be cool, it wouldn't be relatable. Absolutely. We've got a question over here. Um, how did you know like what to start charging your client? Did you hear that? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, that's a great question, actually. So I didn't. I charge way too little. Um, 
But so I, I realized, yo, what I what my thought process was like, I want to get clients. And I was studying the guys who were like already getting clients at the time, right? Who were like in the best in fitness Twitter. And I was like, okay, if I'm a, someone who's like needs health coaching, why would I go to me as opposed to these guys who are in better shape, have thousands of followers, hundreds of thousands of followers, tons of client results. And I just started a week ago. So I was like, okay, I came to the logical conclusion early that I need to work with people for free. A lot of times people skip this step or they're hesitant to do this and they, they don't get any clients for six months. Then they work with people for free. So I worked with people for free really quick, which was cool. And I did it in a way. It's a funny story. So I hit 500 followers on Twitter. This was two years ago. And then I was like, uh, thank you guys for 500 followers as a, to show how appreciative I am of you. Um, I'm, I'll be coaching three people for free for one month. Just like this post, retweet it, and then DM me why I should pick you. And my cocky ass thought at the time I was going to get 20 DMs. I got three. So exactly three people were interested in just free coaching. That's crazy. They, people weren't even interested in free coaching. Um, and then out of those three people, one of them was like a older guy, like four, uh, never mind. No, one of them was, uh, in his forties and he, um, oh, he didn't fully stick to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my bad. My, but one of them was in his forties and he didn't fully commit to it. One of them was 16 and his mom didn't let him continue after the month and he only fully committed to it. And then one of them was like 24 finance CPA, fully committed, saw great results. And then he became my first client at $80 a month. And eighty dollars a month, you know, two years ago, I was pumped. I was ecstatic. Um, but I obviously, looking back, I knew I could have charged more. And then two to two or three weeks later, I charged two forty a month, and then I got another client. And then I thought I could just keep increasing my prices. So then I increased my price to two point five k for three months, and I thought that I would get a client like that. And I didn't get any clients for like three to four months. And then I dropped my price again to like I believe it was like one thousand for three months. And then I got like a few clients there. Then I increased it to like fifteen hundred for three months, two thousand for three months, twenty five hundred for three months, three thousand for three months, and then today we are sitting at four thousand for three months. So there's no right path. There's no right path. There's no right path. I would just say there are benefits to charging more. Like I would highly encourage people not to do a low ticket route, just because it's so much work. Because if you charge less for your service, and people are going to take it less seriously. They're going to be less committed. They're going to be less invested. And they see you as a commodity. Like you don't ever want to be in a position where I'll just use a fitness coach as an example, right? Because there's thousands, if not millions of fitness coaches out there. So you don't want to be in a position where your clients are going to you because you're the easy option, the, the cheap option or the convenient option. You want your clients to just want to work with you because it's you. And you want them to be willing to jump through hoops and pay whatever just to work with you. And obviously that takes time to build up a brand like that. But if you do it that way, then you're kind of set for life. That's how I see it. Because you've ex you've differentiated yourself literally just by being you and you can keep being you forever. It's not like a hard thing to do. And the value, I mean, there's a level of commitment if someone's willing to pay that anyways, right? It, it kind of kind of weeds out the probably bad clients, I would think. Exactly. 100%. 100%. All right. I got two more questions and I'm not sure. Uh, they're seniors in high school. What, awesome. what, what advice would you give them in, during their college years or their next four years? That What's the easiest way for them to maintain their shape, to be their best person? Uh, you can answer it any way you want, but I thought I'd throw something like that out there to you. Okay. So that's a very broad question. I like it. So seniors in high school. And what, what month are we in? We're in, so we just started senior, right? Yes. October. Okay. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So what I would say is number one, the name of the college you go to or the acceptance rate or like the, the flex of the college you go to isn't as important as other people think it is or you may think it is. Like I know people who went to, no name colleges who are crushing it. I know people went to big name colleges who are not, right? So I know it can be very like, oh, yeah, I really want to get to this school, you know, 15% acceptance rate, you know, this is awesome. But like, it's not the end of the world if you don't get into your number one dream school. I'll just say that, right? Like whatever school you go to, there will be people in that, you know, environment that can help you, can provide value, you can learn from, right? So just make the best of whatever you go to. Second, in terms of like, staying in shape 
Most colleges in America have amazing gyms, so that's awesome. Even the small liberal arts colleges have a good gym. So I would say just like try, uh, find one form of cardio that you like and then just try to lift weights like twice a week. Like cardio could be like just playing basketball twice a week, three times a week, going for walks, hikes, jump rope, anything that you enjoy. One cardio, do that a couple times a week and just try to lift weights a couple of times a week. Like you don't have to lift weights by any means, but I just think it's a good use of time. And then – um Track your workouts, I guess. Try to get stronger over time. Cafeteria food's actually pretty good usually, so stock up on protein, 50% of your plate protein. And if you're on a budget, what I would do is I would go to the cafeteria, take back a ton of, like, whatever chicken or whatever in a to-go box, and then just, like, make that with ramen. Like, you get a dollar ramen, some chicken for free. That's a pretty de decent meal, right? Um, Protein shakes, if you can get some sort of a – a blender, if you can buy a blender from Amazon, I think it's called like a Nutriblet. If you can buy one of those for like 30 bucks, 40 bucks, you can just have a, if you're trying to build, get, get like gain weight, build muscle, I would have this specific protein shake. Whole milk, a banana, some peanut butter, and a whey protein. If you're trying to get lean, lose a bit of weight, I would have this specific protein shake. Low fat milk, lots of ice, berries of your choice, and then two scoops protein. That's awesome. So we're la we have a class motto. I don't know how it started. We our class word is the word gains with a Z. I love that. So when you said gains, we heard the Z, not the S. We're just letting you know. I always say it with a Z. That's the way it's spelled in the dictionary. I'm pretty sure. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, Any other questions? Oh, we got one. Oh. Um, how do you deal with unmotivated clients or is like that part of your job? To Great, question. Great question, bro. So how I see it is <clears throat> I objectively know um, that the average coach has less than 50% client success rate and mine's above 80%. So I know that like it works, but at the same time, if a client's unmotivated, I take responsibility to a point. So I'll be off my, my, my thought process or my goals in that situation is number one, identify what's really holding him back what's the key challenge identify if there's something going on in his life that i'm not aware of that's making it hard for him to do this so we're on the same page make it easier for him simplify the process and feel like i'm on his team and just motivate him so that's all the things that i do in the next couple of weeks i'm extra on him extra motivating him to get him on track so i take that in myself but there there's times like i've had i work with what 29 clients right now i've worked with like 105 total and maybe like four, four to six of them, like completely ghosted me. And it is what it is. Like, you know, like maybe they thought it was going to be a, a walk in the park. I had some magic solution, but maybe when they felt like they actually had to do some work that it wasn't what they signed up for. I don't know. But I followed up, you know, every day for weeks with different formats. And at that point, you just got to be OK with, hey, not everyone's going to follow through. It is what it is. I've only had to do one refund in my entire like, two and a half years. And this was a crazy thing because it was during a one week trip to uh, Amsterdam and I was switching. I, I was partnered with these two guys before uh, February 2021. I left, went fully solo. And so I had to switch like my software. And then when I switched the software to my own thing, I didn't realize there was an automatic message that like sent to clients on a certain date. So I signed this new client. And then it sent an automatic message saying like, oh, uh, let me know what you think of the program and something. So the message was clearly automated. And the problem was I didn't build him the program yet. Like I was about to. And then he saw that message and was pissed. He was like, bro, I don't want this automated thing. Like, what is this? And then I just gave him a refund. That was it. That was the one refund. And I'm okay with that. It, it is what it is. You know, shit happens. You can't be too mad about it. And uh, setbacks. Uh, obstacles, if you look at them through like a five to 10 years scope or lens, they don't really like mean anything. Awesome. I've got one question, but I'm waiting to see if there's any other ones here. Ah, go ahead. If I pay you as my coach 4000 for three months, what am I getting from you as my coach over the next three months? Before we're in? Great question, brother. So number one is you get to where you want to be, like whatever your goals are. If you want to lose 25 pounds of fat, if you want to build eight, 10 pounds of muscle, if you want to do this, that, that, you get there, right? Every, every client has different goals. In terms of tangible stuff, 
we 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 hop on calls. You get access to me, text access, whatever. I build you out a specific program. We make adjustments whenever you need. So let's say you're going on a travel trip or whatever, switch out, make some substitutions, make some adjustments. Let's say you get sick, we'll do that. You also get uh, a welcome package worth 500 bucks. So included in that, you get an aura ring. My bad. Included in that, you get an aura ring, you get resistance bands, you get a ton of supplements, chamomile tea, blue light blocking glasses, all that stuff in the welcome package. Then um, I also like, I've flown out to see like, I think 11 of my clients. So that's not like included in it, but sometimes they do get that. And uh, yeah, they get like all access to my products and everything, digital products for free. So, and the thing is um, when you're in high school, right? Like it can be create like you hear off oh, $4,000 for three months of health coaching. That's crazy, right? And like fair, you know? Even when you're in college, you'd probably think that. Even when you're in your 20s. But when you're in your 30s and you've tried, you know, a personal trainer before, you've tried keto, you've tried all these things, you tried for 10 years to get in shape with no success, and you're tired, you're exhausted, you know, you have all these problems, and but you find your finances aren't one of the issues, right? Like you're, you're set financially, but you're tired all the time. You're drained. Like it's a very important thing. So for those people, it's a, it makes sense. It's like they don't even have to think about it. Obviously, sometimes people I'll, people will tell me, hey, that's you know too expensive. It's out of my budget. I'll say, okay, that's fine, man. This isn't the cheapest option. You can go with another coach, right? But for the ones who really want like a full tailored solution to them are in serious, like they want an urgent solution that works lifelong, not just like a quick fix. It's worth it for them. And, you know, they're happy. They're happy to re-sign even. That's a crucial point because people get to a uh, an aspect of their life where they would almost pay any money to feel the way they want to feel. And I think mm-hmm. it, right for the right clients that you're, you're taking on 4,000, you could argue is a bargain. For sure. For sure. And hey, I would but- say like out of my clients right now, maybe 80% of them, when I dropped the price had no hesitation. They're like, okay, let's do it. What's the next steps. And then 20%, well, obviously we're like, ah, uh, it's a little more than I thought, you know, and then for, for guys like that, I offer like monthly installments or I can, I split the payment sometimes. Let's say they want to lose 50 pounds. I'll be like, okay, we'll pay 2000 today and then we'll pay the rest once you've lost 30 pounds, you know, something like that. So I do offer different payments. Thank you so much. Any other questions? All right. You ready for the final question, Raj? Let's do it. To go back to your 18 year old self, what advice would you give? A great question, man. I would say post on Twitter every day. Um, number two, <clears throat> start training harder and start eating way more protein. And just uh, number three would be to, uh, hmm, that's a good question, man. Let me think. Number three. Uh, 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 uh. Those are two sour. Yeah, I would say that third one would be like prioritize my sleep more and don't drink as much in college. Yeah, well, they're not going to do that. I guarantee that. At all. No one. But sleep's a big one, too, and that's a time management thing, isn't it? Yep, yep. I hope we didn't go too long, 41 minutes. No, no, no worries. A half hour, but I blame the kids. They kept asking questions. No, good. I had an hour actually booked out. I'm free for another 20, actually. Well, you know, I'm going to tweet about this. I already took a picture from the back of the room. Let's do it. I'm going to use the word gains, of course. Of course. And I'm going to I'm going to pump up you and what you do. I, I appreciate you, man. Appreciate you too. Appreciate you guys. Great questions. Thanks for listening. And yeah, appreciate you. We can do this again sometime. I tell them it's amazing the people you can meet through social media that you never would meet. I mean, I don't think our paths would have crossed because I don't play tennis. And well, you already referred to me as the old man. So <laughs> no, nah, I didn't uh, say it. <laughs> joking. Yeah, joking. Yeah. Uh, hey, what do we say, guys? Thank <laughs> Hey, I'll post this next week on our podcast, too, and then I'll be in touch in probably next month for you to come on with Matt and I. Oh, perfect, man. Appreciate that. Keep crushing it. Good luck to your girlfriend in nurse, nursing school, right? 
Yes, she's uh she I think she just got back like five minutes ago. Oh, all right. We gotta go. See ya. <laughs> all good, man. Appreciate Thanks, you guys. Man. Take it easy. Bye. See ya.